I've invited the Ministry of Transport, who later on will let us know in terms of the meters, but we are looking at at least up to 70 meters away from the major roads. And as you are seeing right now, along all major roads, we now have uh, cabins being manufactured with a lot of things happening. There's a social impact and economic impact to it as well. I'll address the social side. The social side is that we've seen a lot of crime. Uh, the crime rate has also increased. We have women and people being mugged as thieves are now hiding in some of that infrastructure which is illegally erected. We also have a problem where residents are complaining because some of these car, car sales are being erected in, right in front of people's gates, which makes accessibility very difficult and it makes it very hard for us to be able to maintain law and order. On the economic side, being in the informal sector is not a license to disregard the law. If anything, being a small business means that you need to be able, if you want to get into business, you, be, you need to be able to understand the laws of the land and the bylaws of the municipality in which you want to operate. Firstly, we need you to be a registered company. We need you to be able to be given business permits by the local authority where you're going to be operating. You need to register with Zimra. You need to be formalized. We cannot keep on as a country uh, perpetuating this whole informal debate. People are informal not because the law says they should be informal. They are informal by choice. Everyone knows that if you are going into business, there are laws that you follow. You get a certificate of incorporation. You trade at a registered company address. The side of a highway is not a registered side of a base. People are avoiding going into formalized places to work because they want to avoid paying rent. They want to avoid paying ZESA. They want to avoid paying for water. And out of that comes illegal connections of water, illegal connections of electricity, and a number of other issues. So as it is, we've given them until Sunday. End of day Sunday. Please, all those with illegal car sales, you know yourselves, please remove your vehicles. This is a provincial, province-wide operation. As you heard with cabinet, we've got a cabinet directive on decongestion, and it's starting with the Rai Metropolitan Province. As it is right now, we're supposed to be putting in place filter lanes at roundabouts. We're supposed to be expanding certain roads. We can't do that anymore because people have really encroached. If you go into Loma Gundi, people are now one meter away from the main road, which makes it difficult even to construct, even to decongest Loma Gundi Road. If you go into Masasa, um, around Masasa, we have haulage trucks which are advertising for hire and they're all now parking and doing their business along the highway. If you go into Kuadzan roundabout, we are supposed to be putting filter lanes as part of decongesting traffic. We can't right now because a lot of people are now trading right at the roundabout. If you go into Mbud onto Mbuzi roundabout, it's very difficult. Right now we're trying to do quantity, we're trying to do uh, all kinds of surveying, all kinds of mapping and planning so that we can build the interchange. It's difficult to even do that right now because there's a lot of illegal infrastructure. Uh, we gave local authorities since January this year to please uh, we say to them, please investigate, find out why we're having a mushrooming of car sales and illegal businesses. We even launched a provincial task force to deal with illegal sand poachers who were poaching sand and quarry and selling along highways. That still did not deter them. My greatest disappointment is that we have a lot of council officials who are involved in corruption and involved in corrupt activities. Uh, the Minister of State called for a meeting with, his, with the mayors, with uh, Mayor Mutizwa, and uh, we gave council resolutions to say we want to know what is going on. I'm, I'm afraid to say that we've had serious resistance just for us to have access, information investigating officers into those leases. And what we, uh, we suspect is that people have been receiving bribes. That's why you find car sales are just at every single corner. Recently, we have other parts where trees which are almost 20, 25, 30 years old are being cut down overnight. Uh, some of them are heritage sites. Some of them are Ramsar sites. Uh, some of them are community-based uh, initiatives which uh, residents have taken upon themselves. We also take notice that we have a lot of oppo opposition politicians who have gone on record yesterday mobilizing demonstrations in Chitungwiza and also Chintrist, uh, which is a community-based organization affiliated to some of the politicians where they've been making uh, statements inciting violence. This report has been made to the Zimbabwe Public Police and we will take decisive action. You know we are in the period of lockdown. We do not accept people who are gathering without permission. Neither do we accept people who make public statements on social media inciting violence, saying that you have to kill us first and inciting people to revolt against the police. 
We are on a zero tolerance drive as a Rai Metropolitan Province to, uh, against lawlessness, against corruption, and against people who are giving themselves entitlement, uh, saying that because we're in the informal sector, the law does not apply to us. No, that's not correct. The law applies to every citizen of Zimbabwe. If you want to go it, get into business, go to the local local authority, find out how you can get into business, get a, 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 an authorized place where you can do your manufacturing, pay the levies, do whatever you do, and also idea to Emma. We also have a problem around um, many areas where people, especially in Stungiza, are setting up factories to manufacture sofas right within the road servitude. And uh, the, 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 the disturbing part is they are erecting permanent structures. That means we are find, finding people are erecting warehouses right now in road servitudes. Now, many people might think this is political or it's uncalled for. We are on an economic drive. Uh, the country is poised for Vision 2030. Roads will be expanded. And a lot of communities are going to start enjoying economic activities which they did not have before. How do we expand roads when people are now building buildings in the middle of a road? How do we expand roads when people are now encroaching? We recently toured Chitungwiza, we toured most of the southern suburbs, and we find that some people are now giving themselves title. They're increasing their jurawos to get closer and closer to the roads um, quietly overnight. We are going to be knocking down all those jurawos. So if you know that you have extended your jurawo beyond where you're supposed to be, it is time for you to actually know that the law is caught up with you. In Harare right now, we have a big problem of discipline, sovereign discipline, where people think that the law does not apply to them. We've seen it with them shika shikas. We've seen it with people who are trading right on pavements. We've seen it with people who are doing into drugs. We've seen it in, with people who are now just a law unto themselves. And road servitudes have to be protected because that's how infrastructure development is planned. So as of Monday, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, the Minister of Transport and Infrastructure Development, uh, also VID, and uh, obviously uh, the local authorities responsible are going to be physically visiting all the businesses operating on servitudes. I, I want to note subsection 3 of uh, section 48 of the Roads Act, which says this is a level 8 offense, meaning that you either pay a fine or imprisonment up to two years. So what it means is that gone are the days where we just chase you away. This time we are actually arresting people and we want to know who gave you that piece of land. All the documentation we are going to be retrieving will be sent directly to Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. We want to know if those officials had change of use. As you well are aware, every single piece of land across this country has been planned for. Whether it's state land, it's private land, or it's local authority land, it's been planned for. And so you cannot wake up as a local authority and put a car sales in the middle of a football pitch. You cannot wake up as a local authority and put a car sales or a factory on top of pipes and Zesa servitude, electricity servitude where power lines are running. You have to apply for change of use, which can only be signed by the Minister of Local Government and Public Works. And we, can, we know that the majority of these places have not received their change of use. So without saying much, this is the operation we've rolled out. This is not a, a witch hunting measure. We have been announcing this since January. And we've been, all of our authorities have gone across and given people orders to remove their things. And those, where, uh, those, those, those warnings have gone unabated. So where we are now, enough is enough. If our rare metropolitan province economy is going to grow, we need people to quickly formalize their business, quickly formalize where you're working from, and stop cutting corners. I'll also take this opportunity to give a stern warning to those who are smuggling goods into the country, especially vehicles and groceries. We are going to be working with Zimra to ensure that those vehicles which are at car sales paid their duty and that those vehicles at car sales have actually followed the law to the letter. We are not leaving any stone unturned. If we are going to build a sustainable economy, we need people to toe the line and respect the laws of the land. Thank you.